Hello nature lovers and welcome to another exciting video on environmental systems and societies. This one's all about inferences and observations and how to tell them apart. So let me start by asking you, what do you see here? Do you see an insect? Do you see a shiny object? What's the difference between an inference and an observation? Well, an observation you make with your senses. It's what we touch or smell or taste or see. Sometimes we use instruments to make our senses better like microscopes or pH meters or rulers or stethoscopes. But when we look at this, what's the first thing that comes in your mind? Do you assume that it's some creature or do you just see the green and the copper and the kind of ridges on its back and these little black hairy looking things coming off its side? If you see that, that's called an observation. Observations are descriptions. So we're describing this object. We're not even saying it's a creature. We're just saying it's an object. And here's what that object appears to look like or feel like. In contrast, an inference is made with our brain. It takes all of those observations that we made with our senses and it puts it together and we make assumptions about it. We say, hey, this thing's got six legs, so it must be an insect, okay? But that's not always right. Yeah, this has six legs, but this is actually a spider. Now I know, I know you're probably going, whoa, wait a minute, spiders have eight legs. And you're absolutely right. Most spiders, all spiders naturally have eight legs, but sometimes spiders lose legs. They get in accidents or they have a birth defect or something happens. And so our eight-legged spider all of a sudden is a six-legged spider. But we made an assumption that because it has six legs, it's not a spider, but in fact it is. So we have to focus on observations or inferences, okay? A scientist doesn't like to use an inference because it's inaccurate. Just because we saw those six legs and we said, oh, it must be an insect, we're wrong. Okay, so they want observations. We count or we uh, write down what it looks like or feels like or sounds like. And then later we might work on that uh, as far as making an inference. But, but to start with, we make observations. So I'm going to ask you to look again at this object. And what do you see as a description? Okay, I'll give you just a second. Matter of fact, you might even want to pause the video and take a look at it and, and see and write down everything you notice. Okay, now what I want you to do, now that you've written this down, hopefully, if you haven't, stop and go back and do it, is I want you to bring that list to class tomorrow and or uh, next time we have class. And what I want to do is I want to share our list with each other and see if we wrote down inferences or observations to see how well we get it. Now that you understand the difference between inferences and observations, we can look at the different kinds of observations. Uh, scientists look, use these very differently in their research. And uh, one really focuses on precision and one is more of a description, I guess. So the two types are qualitative and quantitative. And if you notice, qualitative is quality, sounds like qualities, and quantitative is quantities. So starting with qualitative, these are very subjective. They describe colors, smells, or sounds. And typically we say it like the water's hot, or the tree is tall, or it smells bad. Those are qualitative observations. So the red is, the leaf is red, sorry. The garbage really stinks, or the soil is warm in my hands. Those would all be qualitative observations. They're not precise, but they describe something. Quantitative, in contrast, is done by counting or measuring. We almost always use numbers to describe it, okay? So the tree is 31 feet tall, or meters tall, I'm sorry, or that weighs 17 pounds. Uh, there are five parakeets. You know, the elephant weighs 2.31 tons. The black bear is chasing me at 4.6 meters per second. Okay, that's a fast bear. Now, to put it all together, this dirt, we could look at, we could say it's warm, we could say it's soft, but we could also say it's 17% silica. We could say that it's um, 
27 degrees Celsius. We could say that it has a mass of 15 grams per liter. We could be very precise about it, but also descriptive. So we can use both qualitative and quantitative descriptions to observe the soil. Um, and that's typically what scientists do. They don't just do one or the other. I think you, maybe the quantitative becomes more uh, precise uh, and what they really record and, and analyze, but the qualitative helps fill in the gaps. It helps them maybe understand why things are what they are or how they are in comparison to something else. So they're both very important, uh, but you do need to know the difference. I hope this was clear. If it wasn't, please talk to me tomorrow in class or when you see me next. Um, if it was and you're ready, bring your list to class. And otherwise, have a great night. Peace out, homies.